What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're gonna be taking a look at a new widget here for the Xbox Gaming Bar that gives you a lot more control over your Legion Go 2 Z2 Extreme. Now this may also work on the Legion Go or the other Go 2 version or other AMD devices, but we still gotta get into all that. This is gonna focus on the Legion Go 2 Z2 Extreme. And in the gaming bar here, you can see we have the gaming widget, which gives us a lot more stuff that we can get into that we're going to take a look at in this video as far as setup and all the stuff that this offers currently. And there's a lot of updates that are going to be rolling out. And this is kind of evolving and changing and really early days when it comes to this. But it is a great looking uh, widget that's been working really well for me so far here. Now, this is credit to uh, Corando98, the Xbox Game Bar Legion here. He's been working on this pretty tirelessly, like every day. Now, this is forked from a couple of other versions of Xbox Gaming Bar stuff, which I'll just show really quickly here, uh, all the way back to uh, Microsoft's version of this uh, over on GitHub that it was grabbed from. But I will say, with that said, uh, while everyone gets their credit here, the main person working on this is uh, basically turn this into a whole different application, a whole thing on its own from that. And uh, it's really looking nice and really working well here on the go too. So there's a lot we can get into and do here. We're gonna take a look at setup, how to get this working, how to use the overlay built in here, which is a pretty nice overlay for all of your stats and other things uh, as far as what the widget can do currently uh, with the Legion Go 2 here. So let's get into the actual install here that we're gonna be working with for the widget, which is kind of the most cumbersome part. And I did have a little bit of trouble, but once I talked to everybody and got it working, it's actually pretty easy. And over here on the GitHub page, which I'll put a link to in the description, there's a lot of information about what the app currently offers, what the widget it can do here and of course installation instructions which we'll take a look at as well because there's quite a few options and there is one that typically works better at least currently at time of making this video so we'll take a look at that that's what I wound up doing here for my method of getting everything to work all right, so we're gonna jump back up to the top here and we're gonna to go to our releases page. And I'm just gonna grab the currently newest release here at the time of me making this video. So whichever is the latest, most current stable build for you here, you can grab. And then you're gonna come down here to the assets and just grab up the Xbox gaming bar package and download that. Once we get that downloaded, it'll be a fairly easy install once we get everything actually set up to do that. Now, a couple of things. First, you are going to want your game bar in its compact mode, and you're also going to want to set up a hotkey for Windows uh, key plus G to bring up that game bar easily because we don't have an Xbox button we can program on here yet. So you can use whatever button you want to do that. You could replace your quick access menu button if you wanted to up at the top there, um, or you can do what I'm going to do, which is go into my rear view of the hotkeys here and set this up in Legion space. So you can see I already have the one button on the back there set up as win plus G. All you gotta do is select whichever button you wanna program and then you're gonna go into key combinations and you're gonna set that up. There's other options in here for setup, but like I said, we don't have an Xbox button or anything like that yet. So the easiest thing is the key combination and then set Windows plus G and that's gonna give you the ability to easily open up and close the game bar and get into that. And again, if you're not already in compact mode, go into the settings of your game bar and switch it over to compact mode so that it'll work uh, properly when we get into everything. A quick look at the install steps and what I used here, we have three actual steps, but step one has quite a few different options, A, B, C, and D. So for me, the best option that I wound up going with after trying a few different ones was option D. So if we come down here and take a look at option D, it's going to be install certificate without having to go into developer mode. And it's a pretty easy way to get everything installed. All you're going to have to do is right click on the certificate file and install that, which I'm going to show here in the video. Once you get it placed where it needs to be, you're going to install all the dependencies from the X64 folder, which we'll also show and then just install the bundle. So ultimately, this method is actually pretty easy, but it's a matter of getting in and setting everything up so that it doesn't fail along the way, which I'm also going to show you here as well. But then there's only the two other steps of enabling the widget in the game bar, which is pretty easy to do and showed up quickly for me and detecting games for profiles if you want to there. All right, but back over to the file we downloaded, which was our Xbox package here for our game bar. I'm going to go ahead and click and extract this so we have it ready to go. Extract, and then it's going to open up here. And I'll show you what winds up happening if you don't get everything set up in Task Manager first. Um, and then we'll show you how to get that going. But we'll go in here to the folder and you can see we have the security certificate at the top. We have the bundle we're going to have to install and we have the dependencies folder. That's the main stuff we're going to need here. Now, when you go through this after you install the certificate, if you're installing the dependencies and you're getting these errors, it's because there's stuff opened up that we don't want open while we're installing this. So I'm going to stop here for a second and show that. I use Task Manager to deal with this. Basically, you need to close the game box 
anything that's edge related or game assist related, uh, the Xbox app itself, any of that stuff needs to have an end task and you need to make sure it's all closed here, including the green, the uh, game bar up there. Make sure everything's clear, no game bar, no Microsoft Edge, no game assist and no Xbox app, nothing showing up in your task manager. Otherwise, your installs could fail. So once you have that all set up, you can actually do all the install steps without any trouble, which takes us back to installing the security certificate. So in our files that we downloaded here, I'm just gonna go ahead and right click on this and we're gonna do install certificate. We're gonna click open and then you're gonna see local machine here. We're gonna click that. Next, we're gonna click the bottom option and browse. And then you're gonna see the trusted people right there. You're gonna click on that, click okay and then you're gonna finish up. That'll do the security certificate. You should get a little okay here, and then that's gonna allow you to not have to go into developer mode, and then you can install the dependencies. And with our task manager clean of any of those things that could stop us, we can go into the X64 folder here and simply double click each one of these and install them. There's only five in the folder currently uh, in this video, so I'll just go through and install each of these on their own, and no fails, no problems with task manager cleaned up, and then we're able to get these finished. So with all the uh, with the certificate done with these dependencies installed, we can now go back and we'll be able to install the actual widget here with our MSI bundle file up here. I'm going to go ahead and just double click on this. And then that's going to bring up the install for us. Click install. It's much like the dependencies, but a little bit different here. And then it's kind of going to launch itself into a larger kind of odd mode. Uh, just close that out. And then when we go into the widget, everything's going to show up as it should. But that's the whole install once you have everything ready to go for the widget. And then there's going to be some setup for the widget that we're going to get into as well. But if we click our uh, hotkey on the back button, bring up our game bar, go all the way over to our widgets, we should now see gaming if everything installed correctly. And then you're going to be able to click on that and open up the gaming widget. And then that's going to give us access to all the stuff in here, which we're going to take a look at and do a full overview in a little bit. But I want to show some other things when it comes to the setup, because we do have lossless scaling built in here. So I want to show how that works and what you need to do. And also setting up RTSS for the built-in overlay, because there's a great built-in overlay here. But for lossless scaling, you do need to own this in Steam. You can set it up to, uh, to launch automatically when you boot your PC and Steam doesn't have to open, which is nice for lossless scaling. And a lot of you guys are familiar already with lossless. It offers uh, frame generation for a lot of games, uh, upscaling and different things that you can use it for a great piece of software. So the dev has actually tied that into the widget. So as long as your lossless is open, you can actually go in and control some of that. I like to have mine again opening when Windows starts up here and then it's really easy to use and it's ready to go in the widget. So I'll open up the game bar now, go into the gaming widget and we'll go over to where it says system and there's three little dots. There's some more options. We're gonna click scaling. And now you're gonna see it says installed and running lossless scaling. And then we have our scale button, our apply and restart, and some of the basic settings in here that we can adjust the scaling algorithm if you're using any scaling, the uh, frame generation and that type of stuff in here. So we have some stuff and we can apply and restart and everything there. So I like, I like this tie in. I do like to be able to use lossless scaling and this is just another quick way to be able to have that tied in and use it right here with the widget. So I want to show how that worked here. Again, you do need to own it on Steam and it does need to be booted up in order to work here, but I haven't had any problems with it. I'll show it working uh, in game real quick once we get that far, but yeah, quite a few settings you can go down through here and adjust, apply and restart, and then you can scale once you're in your game like you normally would. And uh, it works pretty well. I haven't had any problems with it so far. So the tie in has been really great. We'll jump into some cyberpunk here real quick. Just kind of looking around, you can see the uh, numbers at the top, the base, uh, the, the uh, settings a little high here, but the base uh, frame rate, and then we're uh, basically four times that, I think on here is what I had it set to, and uh, losses was working just fine here. And then I could go back into the game bar, come down to scale, click that again, and it'll turn losses off. So uh, yeah, really quick, really easy, and you can even do that in the quick access part of the menu, and it's even faster there. It's a really nice tie-in. Now the overlay here is also really nice, but you do need to have RTSS uh, uh, Riva Tuner on here to use that just like you would like MSI Afterburner. So I'll put a link to this in the description as well, but you can search for it. It's really easy to find RTSS and get that downloaded. 
Once you get it downloaded, you're going to do a quick little install for it. It's pretty easy and uh, that will allow you to actually use the overlay that's built into the widget. You've got to do a little bit more setup, so I'll show you that as well. But uh, it's really easy. So once you have that downloaded, you're going to go to your downloads and you're going to go ahead and extract this just like we did with our other folders. Extract all. And then that'll bring up the setup. I don't need to go through that. I've already got it all set up on here, but just double click on that and go through the application setup. It's pretty easy. Now, that's going to tie in and give you the ability to use the overlay here in the widget, which is a really nice overlay and has a lot of options. And if you hit start up here and get into the widget options, you'll have RTSSS booting, RTSS booting automatically uh, so that your overlay is ready to go. The very first time you open your widget, though, to use the overlay, it probably won't open RTSS on its own. So go into where you installed it, which is usually C, Program Files x86, and arrive a tuner here and open RTSSS, RTSS, I don't know why I have trouble with that one, yourself here by double clicking. Once you do that once, it should automatically open with your game bar each time. Same thing for MSI Afterburner. You always have to open this manually the first time and then the other programs will open it. So just keep that in mind if you're having any trouble there. But yeah, with RTSS installed and your overlay turned on in the widget, you have a lot of information here that you can see. For the device, it's really quick and easy to use. And again, there's some other options if you just want to have it on more of a basic, if you want to choose everything that's being shown, the colors, all that kind of stuff will show up down in there for uh, in your options. And then, of course, we have detailed, which will knock it down a little bit, and then basic, which will just be a line at the top. So, yeah, really nice little built-in overlay as well with the widget and fairly easy and quick to set up here. I'm really used to RTSS because of MSI Afterburner and other custom overlays and stuff. And you don't have to do any other setup though. Once you install that, make sure it opens all the setups done from the widget and makes the overlay work. All right, so a little bit more of an overview of the actual widget now. So this is your quick access, your very first tab in the widget. And there's a ton of stuff here. Being able to turn on uh, HDR, turn it off, lossless scaling on or off really quickly here, and all the other options that you want quick access to here. And you can turn those on or off and kind of adjust that yourself here as you go to the bottom and go into customize. So this is a great menu here, and you can even add your own custom shortcuts and tiles. In the performance tab here, we've got our performance overlay, which we looked at, full, detailed, basic, and off. We have our TDP power limit that we can control manually if we want to, auto TDP, our OS power modes, CPU boost, CPU EPP controls, our CPU clock control, and FPS limit, which all have worked fine for me so far out of the gate. You also have per profile stuff here. You can set up for games if you want to get into that. I haven't tested it out yet uh, myself. And then we have the graphics tab here with our resolution options, our refresh rate, again, HDR toggle, which is nice. And then some of the AMD features from the Adrenaline app that you can click on and off here and use as well. And all that's worked really good for me too. You can activate your fluid motion frames and all that. And you can do that from the quick access as well. And then of course our scaling menu we looked at earlier for lossless already tied in and built in here. We've got more here with the Legion. So we have access to our RGB lighting, our performance modes and all that. So quiet balance performance, gyroscope, touchpad, all that kind of access here. And then over in system, sticky TDP or manufacturer WMI TDP. We have device TDP limits we can set up and then the OSD customization, which is our overlay, which we looked at earlier that we can customize more there. And then some stuff for our core parking and turning on and off certain cores, which I've not got into testing myself. And I would note again, this is early days of this widget and of this software. So you never know if something's going to be a little bit buggy, but the options in there and there are a lot of updates continuing to roll out here. And then, of course, our options here for the widget to make sure we're starting up RTSS now on startup. So we have our overlay. But that's pretty much it. I'm not going to get too deep into everything. The video is already long enough. We're going to get into more later on when it comes to some tips for this widget. Updates are going to be coming out because there's going to be more things that are happening for this widget in the future and also for anything else that we might need to dive into and test more. So this was more just an introduction and an overview of what this is offering. It's been great so far for me for like the past few days to a week of testing this out. And if you're looking to be able to get a lot more control and a lot more options here for your Legion Go 2, uh, more than what Legion Space has been offering you, this so far seems like a great option and something I want to continue to cover as we go into the future. Anyways, guys, as always, thanks a lot for coming to check out the video. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.